Hi there, my name is Tobias Drucharek and I will present you a short story about one of the most severe diseases we have ever witnessed on roses. A disease called rose rosette that is devastating to the rose industry in the United States. And I would also like to introduce two co-authors of this presentation, Dr. Mariusz Lewandowski from Warsaw University of Life Sciences and Dr. Janis Sanetakis from University of Arkansas. So symptoms of rose rosette are quite characteristic. They include rapid elongation of shoots that remain red in color for a prolonged time and very characteristic brooming with excessive thorniness. The disease is caused by rose rosette amara virus, a plant virus that was identified and characterized in our lab in Arkansas in 2011. It is a multi-segmented virus composed of seven negative sense RNA molecules encapsulated in a double membrane virus particle. And once in the plant, the disease cannot be cured, so early detection and eradication of infected plants are recommended at this point. But preventive measures are not effective. Epidemic of rose rosette have grown to the point where roses are not recommended for planting in some areas of the country. So far, the disease seems to be restricted to North America, but the virus is transmitted by a natural vector that's very small and hard to detect on a plant, which is a microscopic areophyte mite named Philocoptus fructifilus. Our lab have proved that this species transmit the virus from infected to healthy plants. But for me, as an acarologist, one of the most important questions from the beginning was, is Philocoptus fructifilis the sole vector of rose rosette? Having in mind that there are other morphologically very similar species on rose. For example, the key diagnostic features between fructifilis and other two Philocoptus species, Adalius and Resorvius, presented here, are just the short lines on their prodorsal shield. Those mites were never studied and compared using their DNA. So we decided to study that group better using a combination of tools, molecular techniques and morphometry, verify their taxonomical status, and also investigate on their actual role in virus transmission. For that purpose, we have developed a new barcoding method dedicated for microscopic areophyte mites. With this method, we can DNA barcode individual mites and at the same time detect plant viruses inside their bodies by using the direct RT-PCR technique. So briefly, we insert the mite directly into RT-mix. An enzyme, reverse transcriptase, redescribes released mRNA into a cDNA, multiplying the number of targeted molecules. We further dilute that product to get rid of PCR inhibitors and use just part of it as a template for PCR, both in a DNA barcoding and virus detection. So I started collecting rose samples and marked localities on the map. And over two years, we have sequenced almost 300 populations of areophyte mites collected across the United States including major hotspots of rose rosette. The big advantage of Google My Maps application that I have used is that it allows you to track any locality again after the laboratory or sequencing work is done, in case you have found anything new and exciting. This phylogenetic tree is simplified showing just some of the populations that form the major clades in our analysis. First of all, we have identified two distinct lineages within the confirmed vector Philocoptus fructifilus. We don't know yet if the new lineage collected in Nebraska is capable also to vector the virus, and if so, 
at what efficiency. But what's even more intriguing, we have found a completely new aerified species in samples collected in Arkansas, Kentucky, and Michigan, and we name it Philocoptes arcani, with the Latin meaning of arcani hidden, secret. Philocoptes arcani shows 22% divergence in a CO1 marker to Philocoptes fructifilus lineage that was used in rose rosette transmission experiments. It is also distinct morphologically from fructifilus and its full description was published this year. Also, the other two species from Rose, Philocoptes adalius and Philocoptes resovius, group in separate clades. With our analysis showing that all four to be treated as separate species. Interestingly, the new species, Philocoptes arcani, was present only on Rose rosette symptomatic plants. So we were wondering if it's also capable to transmit rose rosette. The direct RT-PCR method that I mentioned before also allows for detecting viral RNA inside individual areophytes. And whenever we use it on mites collected from symptomatic roses, virus-specific amplicons are obtained not only for the confirmed vector, Philocoptes fructifilis, as you can see here, but also for the new species, Philocoptes arcani, but not for uh, Philocoptes adalius. Uh, we have to bear in mind that detecting a virus in a mite or an insect uh, feeding on infected tissue does not prove or guarantee transmission. However, as you can see here, it may help to narrow the list of species in transmission trials, hopefully mainstreaming the vector identification process. So we are building now uh, a clean colony of Philocoptes arcani, and we will see if this species is also capable to transmit Rose rosette emara virus. As we improve our understanding of this microscopic mites from Rose, we also wanted to move forward trying to find any possible solution to combat the disease. And we are working in two areas, looking for effective biocontrol agents against the vector or vectors. One is the area of entomopathogenic or acaropathogenic fungi, and the other one are predatory mites. This is predatory mite that usually feed on a bigger prey like thrips or whiteflies, but many predatory species, especially from the Phytoseida family, are also known as effective biocontrol agents of aerophyte mites. Some even exhibit a preference for aerophytes as a food source. As you can see here, inside the red circles, by living in the narrow spaces, aerophyte mites try to escape that predation. And many predatory species are available commercially and are used to control, for example, tomato russet mites or aerophyte mites on roses in Europe that are grown for cut flowers. So I have checked all of the samples, all of the rose samples that I have collected across the states also for predatory mites. Uh, we wanted to check if some species are more often present on roses infested with fructifilis, as this was never studied before. What predators are most prevalent on roses infested with the vector or on symptomatic plants, with the ultimate goal of selecting two or three species for further experiments? And we have recovered over 350 individuals representing at least 12 different predatory mite species. The two presented here were the most often encountered in our samples. Western predatory mite, Valendromus occidentalis, and Amblyseius andersoni. Both belong to the Phytoseide family and both are commercially available, with andersoni being offered in more than 50 countries. Both are classified as type 3 predators, which means that they can feed on whiteflies, thrips, broad mites, aerophyte mites, 
but also on various kinds of plant pollen. And this is definitely an advantage because it allows the population of the predator to develop on plants even before the appearance of the pest or they can survive on the plants much longer after population of the pest is low ensuring the continuous suppression of the pest even preventing the new outbreaks so these two species should be used in further field experiments against the vector of rose rosette why it is important to study them better the interactions between mites on a plant are far from being nice and simple we often see that even the predators with a high preference for areophyte mites also feed on other plant inhabiting arthropods so in this simple experiment that i would like to show you and that was made by my phd advisor Mariusz Lewandowski in poland you will see what consequences it may have when trying to select the most effective biocontrol agent just relying on the predation rate of one pest we have studied in poland the predation rate of five commercially available predatory mite species they were fed with areophyte mite philocoptes adalius important pest in cut flower rose production and as you can see, the very last species here, Swirsky, was consuming the highest number of areophyte mites per day. Swirsky was also doing a great job when two spotted spider mites were used as a food source. But as we wanted to select a species most suitable to control areophyte mites in rose production, in a third experiment, we offered both types of food together. And as you can see here, it wasn't Swirsky anymore, having the highest share of areophytes consumed per day. It was Cucumeris and Andersoni, with the highest share of areophytes in their diet, around 80%. So when we start to consider that some predatory species may feed on many different food sources, including plant pollen, the situation is getting more complex. And of course, the potential predation rate is not all that matters. Predatory mites are often studied for their reproductive potential on different types of food or combinations of foods, and their performance are there under different environmental conditions. So, in practice, uh, Andersoni and Cucumeris are the most often used by the growers in Europe to control areophyte mites on the roses but i think they pick them also because they are generalists effective against a spectrum of pests we started from the vector and we talk about predatory mites and now in the final part of my presentation i would also like to talk about fungal acaropathogens so one of the colonies of philocoptus fructifilis in our lab had collapsed because of some fungal infection as you can see here on the pictures, mite bodies have been parasitized with the fungus growing out of them. So the idea of looking for an acaropathogen has some merit because of the nature of the vector of rose rosette. Philocoptus fructifilis is a refuge seeking type of mite. It seeks shelter and protection around buds or inside flowers. And areophyte mites, because of their size, are frequently submerged in a dew, the free water. And they also inhabit moist, uh, tender areas on the plant surface. So the microclimatic conditions that, in theory, should favor the growth of a fungus, but are hard to reach with a conventional pesticides. And various acaropathogens are reported in the literature and some are also used commercially. We DNA barcoded few of these fungal cases, and it turned out to be a member of a genus Meira. Meira is a group of yeast-like fungi placed within the order Exobacidiales. There are at least five species of Meira reported to date, uh, with some proven to be associated with areophyte mites. And 
interestingly, some are also reported to have the antagonistic effect not only on mites but also on powdery mildew. It turned out to be quite interesting and pretty easy to grow on different media in the lab, so we harvested Blastoconidia and started experiments with spraying of mites in cages. And the isolated Mayra species was able to kill 43% of mites after 7 days comparing to 12% mortality in the control, which is not spectacular. Definitely less to what was observed by other authors for citrus rust mite, where mortality was almost 100%. But they also used a different Mayra species and at much higher concentration. Uh, but we just started our work and we will continue it also keep looking for other fungi as having effective acaropathogen against the vector could be a game changer in our efforts to control rose rosette. We have to find a practical solution to control rose rosette. And this mite, as any other pest, can be effectively controlled. But in order to do that, we need to continue the studies of those mites and clarify on vectoring genotypes and species as Philocoptus fructifolus may not be the sole vector of rose rosette. Different mites may also have different transmission efficiency and this may complicate finding and developing virus resistant cultivars. So only through a better understanding of the vectoring mites and their natural enemies we should be able to find a solution that could be implemented in the field. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and please contact me if you have any questions. I would also like to mention two finding sources and the great support they provided. University of Arkansas Commercialization Fund for the support in studying the acaropathogen and American Horde and Horticultural Research Institute for the study on predatory mites.